to achieve energy security and sustainability. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the United Arab Emirates, arrived in Rahim Yar Khan yesterday on a private visit to Pakistan. He was welcomed at the airport by Prime Minister Mohammed Shahbaz Sharif. During their meeting, the two leaders expressed their resolve to further strengthen brotherly ties, promote mutually beneficial cooperation, and to move forward on their understanding reached during the recent visit of the Prime Minister to the UAE. Russia's Special Representative for Afghanistan, Ambassador Zamir Kabulov, visited Pakistan this week as part of his tour to the region. He held meetings with Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ms. Hina Rabani Kar, and Special Representative for Afghanistan, Ambassador Mohammad Sadiq. In these meetings, the situation in Afghanistan and recent developments in the region were discussed. Pakistan stressed the importance of peace and stability in our neighborhood. We underscored our desire to work closely with regional countries, to pursue continuous and practical engagement with the interim Afghan government on countering terrorism and to help avert humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Both sides reiterated their commitment to work closely to further strengthen coordination and cooperation in promoting peace, stability, economic development in Afghanistan. They also agreed to continue engagement both bilaterally and in the context of regional forums such as Moscow format and the neighboring countries of Afghanistan platform. As you're aware, the eighth session of the Pakistan-Russia Intergovernmental Commission on Trade, Economic, Scientific and Technical Cooperation was held from 18th to 20th January in Islamabad. It was led by Mr. Ayaz Sadiq, Federal Minister for Economic Affairs of Pakistan, and Mr. Nikolai Shulginov, Minister of Energy of the Russian Federation. Mr. Shulginov also called on the Prime Minister of Pakistan. The meetings were held in a positive and constructive atmosphere. The two sides discussed enhanced bilateral cooperation in trade and investment, energy, communication and transport, agriculture, industry, finance, customs and banking sector, higher education, science and technology, and information technology. A joint statement was issued at the end of the session. The two sides also signed a number of documents, including an agreement on cooperation and mutual assistance in customs matters, and a working agreement on airworthiness of aeronautical products. You may have seen that Pakistan has strongly condemned the recent acts of desecration of the Holy Quran in Sweden and the Netherlands. We see these acts as racist, xenophobic, and Islam Islamophobic. Far from being a symbol of the freedom of expression and opinion, these acts are provocative and hurtful for the religious sensitivities of over 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. Their sole aim is to incite violence against Muslim minorities. We have conveyed our concerns to Sweden and the Netherlands and urged these governments to take concrete steps against Islamophobic acts. The last 10 days of January carry painful memories of three massacres committed by the Indian occupation forces in the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir in the 1990s. On 21st January 1990, in Gawakadal area of Srinagar, the Indian troops opened fires on peaceful protesters, killing at least 50 civilians and injuring dozens. A few days later, on 25th of January 1990, another 21 unarmed Kashmiris were killed by the Indian troops in Hanwara town in northern IIOJK. And this very date, the 27th of January, is a reminder of another day of bloodshed in 1994 when Indian troops massacred 27 civilians in Kupwara town of IIOJK. To this day, the victims and their families await justice and perpetrators of these heinous crimes have never been held to account. Today, we remember and celebrate the martyrs and pay rich tributes to their sacrifices. 
Pakistan will continue to raise its voice on the continuing grave human rights abuses and IIOJK. It will also continue to extend unstinted moral, political, and diplomatic support to the people of Jammu and Kashmir in their quest for self-determination in accordance with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. I will conclude with an upcoming visit announcement. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ms. Hina Rabani Khar, will lead the Pakistan delegation to the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. On 30th of January 2023, the Minister of State will present Pakistan's National Progress Report under the Universal Periodic Review UPR process at the Council. This will be Pakistan's fourth review. Previously, Pakistan has been reviewed under this process in 2008, 12, and 2017. In her presentation, the Minister of State will outline the wide-ranging legal, policy, administrative, and institutional steps taken by Pakistan to safeguard and advance human rights over the last five years. She will also highlight Pakistan's important contributions towards global human rights discourse and norm building. Established in 2007, UPR is an important mechanism of the Human Rights Council. Under this peer-driven review mechanism, human rights record of all UN member states is reviewed every four to five years. Pakistan will continue its constructive engagement with the Human Rights Council and the UN human rights machinery. I thank you. ترجمان دفتر خارجہ اس وقت پریس بریفنگ دے رہی ہیں اپنی پریس بریفنگ میں انہوں نے متحدہ عرب امارات کے صدر نے پاکستان کا دورہ کیا اس سے متعلق بریف کیا اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ انہوں نے دنیا میں بڑھتے ہوئے اسلامو فوبیا کے اوپر پاکستان